Hi, I'm Luke Whitehead, and this is the Contra Bassine. The Contra is made of uh, over five metres of tubing, which is turned uh, out of maple. It's made in various sections um, to achieve the folding over of the instrument with little U-bends, as you can see, at various points. Uh, this is topped off with a lead pipe, which runs up to the crook. The crook, it forms the link between the instrument and the reed. Uh, you can have different lengths of crook, which vary the pitch and intonation of the instrument slightly. Uh, and it also has a large effect on the quality of the sound. The double reed basically consists of two uh, two halves, which are fastened together using wire and thread, uh, and the two blades of the reed, which is this bit here, vibrate together when air is passed through them. So on its own, the reed sounds like this. But then that creates the vibration within the tubing of the instrument. I make both contra bassoon and bassoon reeds for myself, um, which is quite an involved process and can be very frustrating at times um, and can on occasion become the bane of our lives as double reed players. But uh, in order to achieve the sound and, and response that you want individually as a player, it's much better to, to make your own. The low end of the instrument is very rich, resonant. Um, it it uh, goes down to the lowest note, which is bottom B flat, which is the B flat right at the bottom of a grand piano keyboard, um, and sounds like this. The top end is slightly open to discussion, but it, uh, it's roughly the same as the bassoon. Uh, so in terms of written pitches, you can play the top C, which you hear at the opening of the Rite of Spring in the bassoon. But one of the interesting things about the contra is that it's actually notated an octave higher than it sounds. So this is, in effect, middle C on the keyboard. To begin with, you pass air through the reed, which causes it to vibrate. Um, there are various stages in the process which involve a lot of breath support from the abdomen um, to create a, a steady column of air. Um, essentially, the lips are just used to control the vibration and also to form a seal around the reed to channel the air into it. Um, and then the tongue is used largely to articulate the start of notes um, by lightly touching against the tip of the reed. When you use the tongue to create short notes, you can play very crisp staccato. <laughs> or by maintaining the airflow without interrupting it with the tongue and create a much more smooth legato. <laughs> Apart from using vibrato like any other uh, wind instrument uh, to either help project or warm the sound, um, you occasionally are asked to play uh, for example, flutter tongues, which is a very distinctive sound on the contra. We do have to play trills um, on the contra bassoon. Uh, for the most part, they can be achieved using the normal key system. Um, but there are a couple which are too awkward to perform without extra trill keys, which one would have added to the instrument. For example, uh, 
trilling from A D to E flat in the middle of the bass clef stave. <laughs> We have a special key for that. Occasionally, um, uh, whether it's a particular conductor that wants a very quiet effect, um, sometimes if your reed is uh, uh, posing difficulties with playing quietly enough, um, you do mute the instrument. And it's usually done simply by putting a, a duster or um, some sort of cloth into the bell, which muffles the vibrations. Some of the best and most effective contra writing is where it's added to, for example, a trombone chorale. Um, Brahms uses this quite a lot. Um, uh, and it creates a, a different resonance to, for example, the tuba due to the uh, harmonic structure of the sound. Also, because it's capable of quite punchy uh, staccato attack, it's often added to the, b the double bass section to give extra punch and clarity to that. Um, for example, in Beethoven uh, Fifth Symphony in the last movement. <laughs> And occasionally it gets solos as well, which is nice. There's a, a short but quite important solo in the final movement of Mahler's Ninth Symphony, uh, which uses the low, uh, soft timbre very effectively. <laughs> Playing at the very bottom end of the instrument, particularly when you have to play fortissimo, uh, requires a lot of air. You just have to put an awful lot of air through the instrument. Um, so you may well find yourself having to breathe um, every two or three bars in those occasions. Um, higher up, the instrument actually requires less because you create a resistance within the reed by using your, your lips. Um, which reduces the airflow, and also there's a much smaller amount of tubing to cause to vibrate to play these shorter, higher notes. When you play softly, the demands are different because the the real problem with breathing uh, when playing softly is that you may not use enough air, um, and you, so your body's natural reflex which is to breathe you have to learn to fight in order to maintain a calm steady airflow one example of of that is the uh the opening of the Strauss tone poem alto sprach zarathustra um where the contra has to play a very quiet low bottom c for possibly upwards of 20 seconds um, with only double basses scrubbing for support, um, which is a challenge more because of maintaining a level of calm and, and fighting this, uh, this reflex to gasp for air. If you've enjoyed learning about the instruments in the orchestra, why not try our iPad app, The Orchestra? featuring Esapekka Salonen and the Philharmonia Orchestra. Fully interactive video playback lets you view the orchestra from all angles, and the revolutionary beat map shows you who is playing where. Follow along with synchronized scores, hear the inside scoop in audio commentaries, and get a 360-degree view of all the instruments. Available for download in the App Store on iTunes.